Hello, welcome to the second, this week in World of Warcraft, specifically Mythic Plus focused. We've got a bunch of big news this week, so there's loads of announcements on the PTR. We're going to go through news first, then we'll go through affixes, we'll go through the Mythic Plus meta as well, what a change in, in terms of the priorities for dungeons as well as classes, we'll go through like tier lists and all that sort of jazz, and then we'll end off with some forum posts and some clips as well. We're here again with Ollie, younger brother, he's a uh, world first raider. Just become a free agent, haven't you? So you're looking for a new guild. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll jump into the news immediately. So the yep. first thing I think is uh, pretty important for those Mythic Plus dedicated players and has only been announced today is that tier set acquisition is changing now. So they're obviously interested. I mean, this is a really long post that we have in front of us here. Um, so Skorazard has gone through like the philosophy as to why they're changing it. But basically the, what they're trying to do is they're trying to remove some friction. So now when the Catalyst releases, you don't have to do anything. You just get charges every single week. There's no quest or anything associated with it. And the bigger point is you're also going to get tier now from doing a an, a an achievement. So basically if you get either Heroic Cleared... 2.2k Mythic Plus rating or a to be determined, I think, PvP rating, you just get a piece of tier given to you. So that's massive. I don't know what you think about it. You obviously raid and you've always had access to um, tier piece pretty early in the season, I would have said. Or I guess maybe not on alts. Yeah, I've I've always had access to it early, but that's mainly just through luck. Like, it's not as if I've always been funneled, but I almost yeah. always got four piece in the first week or two. Yeah. Um, I think that that's absolutely massive, though, because I think if you're playing Mythic Plus at the high end, I believe you're able to get like the 2.4k achievement or whatever, just second week, as soon as we've been through both affixes. It was quite hard to do, so maybe it would take more people a month or even more than that. But yeah, it's really, really good because getting one specific tier piece, like that's often not going to be your first tier piece. It'll be your fourth, which is the hardest to get. So it's really really nice getting a specific one yeah this it, so that piece specifically as well i'm pretty certain is going to be like this omni token so the second part of this is the omni yeah. token which is going to drop from last boss so both of these you basically get given a token and then you can choose which tier piece that you want right so that's the reason why this is going to be really good and exactly as you've just said Oli, like getting that two weeks in for mythic plus is just massive because if you said already had if you had one drop from the raid maybe at that point um you've got lucky you've pulled one from the vault you then know that you want to target something else and you can instantly do that in the second week so it's going to be super useful and 2.2k so i think you just said you weren't sure on the ratings but that's ksm right which is roughly 14s i would say across the board so that's going to be very achievable for a lot of players in mythic plus to to get that in the first two weeks as long as you've got the time to do you know eight keys each week you should be able to get that fairly early on into the season um, so that's huge and then yeah the other thing so the Omni token is going to drop from the last boss and again you can if it drops for you you will basically you will get a, a choice again as to which tier piece that you want so you can start targeting slots so if you've been really hard done by and you've had only three pieces for a couple of weeks and then all of a sudden you get some loot from last boss that could be I mean that's going to be huge again. I think for funneling gear, it's also going to affect the race to world first, right? That's going to make it so much easier to get tier set in splits. Um, hopefully, it means we don't see so many splits. Do you know how long we were doing splits for in this race to world first? It was something like three or four days of the first week, right? Yeah, I can't remember, but it was either two or three or three or four because Echo and Liquid did a different amount of days. I would yeah. guess it was three or three and four. I think Liquid probably did three. Echo did four. Yeah, and then that actually came out in terms of item level as well. I think Echo was slightly ahead for most of the race, right? Um, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'm not sure if it was worth it, though, because it wasn't by a substantial margin. It might have been like they were one eye level ahead. Oh, and it, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's something, but it's whether it's worth a day of progress or not. For sure. Yeah, I completely agree. But that's still a lot of time at the start of the race. Like, I want to see... Yes. I mean, I think the change is good to release Heroic and Mythic at the same time for most people, but for the Race to World first specifically, and like the spectacle of watching it, I want to see as few split runs as possible. So if this is going to reduce the amount, and then all of a sudden they can get all of the tier that they need in like two days, 
then that's a bonus for me. Um, I think that's, it, hopefully anyway, this is going to help with that as well. And they'll get into actually progressing mythic bosses a bit faster. I completely agree. I think the less splits, the better. Blizzard needs to do something more about it than this, though, because I don't think it's going to change much. I think it'll push them both to like three days or like two and a half because yeah. it's going to give more people four set easier and quicker for sure, but they're still going to need to run through the other five bosses to get everybody or the people that they want it on or the people that get lucky enough to get it. They're three piece first. Um, yeah, but, but, all, but don't forget, if they clear heroic difficulty, they're also getting a piece. So that's like, so there's going to be five bosses that dropped here, one that just drops the Omni token, and then you're going to get a piece from the yeah yeah. The that's, so I think that's it could. True. I think they could legitimately do, be done in like a day and a half. Like it might halve the amount of time they have to spend doing splits. Although yeah. ha having said that, there's still some really rare rewards in there, right? There's trinkets. So maybe it's maybe actually it's, it'll drop down from like three days to two days, like you said. But in in the grand scheme of things, I think it's going to help with the again like the spectacle, like the the viewing experience. I think is going to be improved by this. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, I I still I still though I think they need to come up with some kind of system. They need to like re-implement. I know a lot of people wouldn't like this. I wouldn't like this, but they need to re-implement like personal loot or something like that for the first week or two weeks of a tier. I really, really, when Mythic opens, which is instantly, I want to see them go in, do normal heroic on the mains, and then I want to see them do Mythic on the mains. I want to see mm -hmm. them in Mythic in like three hours. What about, this is like, I've, I've thought about this before, but I, I didn't really talk to you about it beforehand. What about if they just did like two weeks where heroic's available before getting into Mythic? Go the opposite way. So before we had heroic was a week, then it went into Mythic. What happens if we went two weeks of heroic so they can just get all their splits out of the way they're fully heroic item level. As soon as Mythic opens, they're just straight into Mythic in that second week. Um, do you know what I mean? So as instead of going, they've gone backwards, but instead yeah. go the opposite way this time. I think. I mean, I think it would be slightly better. But when when I was in pieces, we just about got like everything done that we could have done in that first week, anyways. Like, yeah. <sighs> I'm not sure if that's true because in Sepulchre we did some really de degenerate stuff because you could guarantee tier on people by boosting yeah. 10, 10, 10 plus of yeah. people. Yeah, and uh, it's ridiculous, but... Um, yeah, so for those that don't know, that's using helpers, know. right? What, they, what they've called helpers now. So that's people from yeah. the, the sort of general public that then join in and trade loot over. Yeah. It gets more degenerate yeah. in the second week because then people can actually trade tier pieces, right? Yeah. Um, well, you, you could guarantee people trade a normal first week is what we did because oh, you got yeah. one piece of tier per one piece of tier per ten people. So we boosted a hundred people through heroic um to get ten of them tier and then those ten people we took to normal so that they to could guarantee, guarantee normal trade, trade the normal piece. Yeah. yeah. But and even we it, did that a lot. In that scenario though, if you spend the first week doing normal splits to sorry, well, heroic and normal to get yourself normal gear. In the second week, you still want to get heroic pieces because there's a big item level yeah. increase. Although you've already got the tier set, there's still that carrot in front of you. Like you need to go and get that at some point. So, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think two weeks of heroic would be better though. I think they just need yeah. some sort of system that makes it feel good for them. They don't feel massively undergeared, but I think they should just go normal heroic or heroic normal into mythic on mains like if they could yep. somehow make that possible that would be insane you would literally be just getting into the race right off the get-go and seeing which guild is better and executes on mechanics faster rather than yep. seeing how efficiently they can get the loot and literally nobody in the world's like watching those first two or three days like it's yep. just and nobody likes playing it either i know from uh, experience yeah, that and that's the point at which like the draw to watch the race to build first is at its peak as well. Like as soon as the patch yeah. releases, everyone wants to watch, but yeah. then they're doing splits. So but the only thing I think they could do differently is actually turn it into events. Like you bring the top ten guilds onto a tourney realm and you just give them the juiced gear that they want. But then I don't know how relatable it is. You turn it into like an MDI setting almost. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of it's really hard to like work it out. Although it almost is already, it almost feels like an MDI setting because no one else has access to using helpers and like funneling gear anyway. So, yeah, I'm not sure. 
I I don't think Blizzard would want to do that unless they did what they did with the Great Push, where they limited it to playing like ten hours a day. Because if they start endorsing it and people are playing like sixteen hours a day, which is legitimately unhealthy, I don't know if they could get in trouble. What do you mean for like the race to will fist? Uh huh. On a, on yeah, a Tony like, realm. They uh, wouldn't do that, right? Do they not already endorse the race to will fist? Do they not have like official? I don't know. No, no, Blizzard does nothing for it. It's all community run. That's actually interesting, like, though. Like, it's literally none of it. I think all of the events and stuff are driven by the the guilds. So they, uh-huh. it's like so degenerate that it might actually be a black mark against Blizzard if they took it on as an actual event. I've never, I've never actually thought about that before, but it's true. I mean, the thing is, I don't know because, I, I, as far as I'm aware, nobody's ever actually been like here in that specific period. I just think it's not healthy for people in the long run to be yeah. playing for sixteen hours a day for. I mean, it was really bad for us in Sepulchre because it took us like three and a half weeks, whereas three it's normally weeks. one and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That and was, that was rough. Yeah, that, that mainly just affected people's mentals rather than physical health, but... Yeah, I mean, Le- uh, Liquid had like a, a mental boom for that as well, right? It was just... Yeah. Lots of things were going wrong. Yeah, yeah. the first year in the history of Forever where a guild that was going for Race to World first actually just, just stopped trading, out. I think. Yeah, yeah. before it was before too getting much. it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Anyway, right. Big news for this section is there's more tokens available immediately getting into 10.1. So you're going to have more coming from the raid, plus then you get some from achievements. There's no real change to Catalyst. It's still going to release six weeks in. The only difference is there's no friction there anymore. You can just get a charge each week. So those are the big bits of news. Next up for news, then we have Week Horrors. Again, this is not that important for Mythic Plus. Right, I don't think this would impact Mythic Plus whatsoever. However, it is going to massively affect the race to World First again. So, in my opinion, this is exactly what the game needs. I don't know about yourself. Like, are, are you in favor or against add-ons? Uh, I'm massively against. I think if Blizzard did everything correctly, they would implement a few important add-ons. Like, mm-hmm. nobody wants to play without a DPS meter, right? It's the most important add-on in the game. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think that Blizzard should strive for zero add-ons. I think they should try and make it so that the base UI and the base game doesn't require any add-ons at all. Yeah, I'd agree. Maybe not a weak aura system, but I mean, they're getting pretty close now, but a way of tracking buffs in a more... Maybe they build it around the personal UI display or something, but I would want to be able to like tick which buffs I want to track, right? Yeah, for sure. I'd want uh, a way of tracking like cooldowns for the party as well they don't have that currently but again if you could just have a little section where it's like you track other people's cooldowns i think that would be good and then the yeah. dps meter and healer meters again uh death logs that sort of thing so just just something that interrogates the log for you so then you can like zone in on certain things um yeah and um depends on depends on how hard they would make bosses without weak auras and stuff but i still think some amount of boss timers would be nice some if timing. they implemented that yeah, I, I go back and forth on this. I think it would be good, but I also think if the game facilitated it enough, then it is in there was like clear indications when abilities were going to happen, you know, 10 seconds before you get this like sound effect or some sort of visual uh, guidance that something's going to happen, right? Uh-huh. That would be another way of doing it rather than just timers. But I agree that that would be another one. It depends how much they want to change the philosophy. But I'm, I'm fully on board for removing add-ons from the game. Just needs yep. to be a little bit more iteration on the baseline UI, um, and I think this is a massive step. This is this to me feels like they might be prepping, maybe not the next expansion, but maybe the one afterwards, to uh, to remove add-ons from the game because this is this is them clearly making a statement here that they think that the how weak ores are being used is wrong at the minute, and it's it's impacting their design space as well as how the game's actually played too much. So. Yeah, I mean, the, the big one for me, Jailer's uh, bomb assignments, right? When I was raiding and playing Cutting Edge, I don't think we could have done that Jailer bomb mechanic on a consistent basis without weak auras. And that was clearly them trying to design something which made it really hard to play even with a weak aura, right? Because that was still hard to actually execute even with weak auras, I would have said. So yeah. that's the sort of thing where if you just remove weak auras, you wouldn't have to design something that complicated. Right, you can have mechanics which are much more not dumbed down, but they're easier to manage just with like your natural input. So like when you're seeing the boss do something, you then respond in a different way. So 
yeah, I, I'm super, I'm very excited for this and I sort of want to get back into raiding just to like test what it's going to be like in the next few patches maybe. Um, but it's huge news, yeah, I think it's a massive, massive, not a U-turn, but it's a change in direction for sure from uh, from Blizzard. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think what we were saying as well, if they could get to no add-ons, this is for sure not only a step in the right direction, I think it's the biggest first step that they could make. Like, weak or is a hands-down the biggest problem and biggest perpetrator in this like the yeah there are just some weak auras that play fights or play specific mechanics for people and that's just it's just not fun it's crazy isn't it yeah i mean the and win weak aura that liquid had did you see that did you yeah, play with it actually just... as pieces i can't remember no we just we i wasn't in on the boss but i'm pretty sure we just like played the mechanic yeah so that was, but that was insane. If anyone doesn't know, it basically played a mechanic for you where you got a positive and a negative and it told you where to go and stand beforehand and then who to go and walk into, whether you basically walked left or right, essentially. I'm pretty sure that's how it worked anyway, but it was crazy. It literally yeah. just played the game for you and you just had to follow the instructions on the screen. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm fully on board with this. I think it's a great direction. Um, all right, next news then, we have a new method for upgrading loot, which... I'm, again, a massive fan of... Honestly, everything that Blizzard are doing right now is just crazy how uh, how good it is. So for those of you that don't know, Valor's getting removed, and the new system is basically going to be you get these new stones, right? So there's flight stones, you get uh, crests. And I think there's a third tier, I can't remember. But basically, now if you have a piece of normal gear, you can then use flight stones to upgrade it to heroic. I think that's how it works. And then you can use another set of uh, stones to upgrade the heroic piece into like a, an almost a mythic item level piece, right? So basically at the minute, say if you get a 408 heroic item level trinket drop from the raid. So I have a 408 item level controlled current technique from Kurog, for example, right? I could now upgrade that. I think it's... I want to say it's nine item levels or eight item levels up to 415 item level is approximately where it would get to. So it would go to baseline mythic item level. It's not quite as good as the actual drop for mythic, but it gets very, very close. So there's the, the big two changes with this are, firstly, you can no longer farm Valor at low mythic plus, right? You actually have to do higher mythic plus to be able to get the, the relevant stones or crests that you need to upgrade pieces, right? So that's the first change. The second one is you can now upgrade... Uh, raid loot to a higher item level, very, very similar to the way that Mythic Plus um, increases work. So now if you get a good trinket drop from raid as a Mythic Plus player, so you're just doing your heroic clears, you're not actually a Mythic Raider, and you get that trinket, you can now upgrade it to be very, very close to the Mythic level, which is uh, awesome. Again, for Mythic Plus players, I'd be very, very excited about this. I think it's a, again, it's just making life easier, right? I think it's a great change because of it. Um, I don't know if you've got anything to add to that. I, I I personally just think it's a great change all around. Yeah, it's it's absolutely huge. It's pretty much the systems that we have in place now, except from like better and easier to understand. And then yeah, like you said, there's more there's more crossover. Like on all of my alts, for I'm in the same boat where I have heroic trinkets, and they are just never going to get mythic because I'm not going to do like the last four to five bosses on mythic on all of my characters that's just not going to happen um so i think it's a lot better for mythic pluses though because you can do any key range on any of your characters really so it's more crossover in that direction like it's yeah. it, it'll be good for both but it's even better for mythic pluses which i'm all for i think mythic plus is the more uh, accessible content to the majority of the player base because it requires five people rather than 20 yeah, you can do it on your own time schedule, right? You can just log in and plug it as well. The, yeah. I mean, there's a theme here. There's an overarching, clear design direction from Blizzard where they're trying to make the game more accessible for Mythic Plus players. And I'm finding it very noticeable. It's not necessarily like, oh, they're not saying that this is what they want to do. But all of these changes are pushing us in that direction. So they made the change to item level with 10.0, right? So now that Mythic Plus, I'm 418 item level. If I was Mythic raiding, I'd be like 420 item level, for example, right? Because now we can get really high item level from um, from Mythic Plus through the, the vault system, as well as inside the, the actual dungeons, right? And then now they're making it so you can get tier earlier. Now they're also making it so you can upgrade the raid drops into almost mythic raid item level 
It's just all of it to me is screaming that they know that Mythic Plus has been slightly inaccessible and they're trying to make it similar to raiding in terms of if you just Mythic Plus, this can be a solo end game pillar and you'll be absolutely fine and not doing much content outside of that, which I'm super excited for as a mainly Mythic Plus player. Um, and I think the fact that it's on the radar for Blizzard and they're trying to make Mythic Plus an end game sort of pillar by itself is awesome. Like it's a... Yeah, it's a much better style of content for me personally and my personal life. I um, yeah, I need the time to be able to just log in and play when we want. Like, what do, what do you reckon we play, maybe play two or three nights a week pretty consistently? Yeah, something like that on average. It's similar to raiding, right? But we can uh -huh. because it's only a few of us getting together. We'll be we'll either be a four pre-made or a five pre-made. We just pick the nights when everyone's free. That doesn't work in raiding, right? As a in context for raiding you just have those fixed nights don't you and then yeah I, I i literally can't do that um we i don't have the sort of flexibility in my schedule so as i'm getting older and older and becoming more of a boomer mythic plus is just so much better for me so i'm again very very excited for these changes yeah for sure agree cool next one we have then is uh trinkets so you you've just had a look at these beforehand haven't you do you have like any may, any takes on the first sets? So the idols, the rare trinkets. Is there anything you want to mention about them? Um, they're they're very weird. I think that they're gonna be good, but they're gonna be kind of hard to play with. Even though they don't seem any different from normal trinkets, just the way that they work. I'm assuming that they have less uptime than your average trinket because of the amount of stats that they give. But that means that they're actually might be good enough that you play around them, because yep. they're going to increase your damage by, like, 30 to 40%. So you can delay your cooldowns for, like... I mean, you can't delay it for minutes, but you can delay it for, like, 30 seconds, see if you get a proc, and try and time your cooldowns around the trinket uh, proc, which there's, there's mm -hmm. almost never not on use trinkets that are strong enough to make that happen, which I kind of like. I just think it's a bit weird. Yeah, I think it's going to increase the complexity significantly, like you just said. So, the, for instance, I'm looking at the idol of chaotic arrogance here. So, this one specifically is an on, uh, it's not on you, sorry, it's a proc effect that gives you 3k primary stat at raid find right level, I think that is, full 1 5, or maybe that's normal, I can't remember. But this will go all the way up to like 441 item level, right? Maybe even higher because it's a rare piece actually. And the primary stat, like we've just said, will give you something like 30 to 40% damage in that window. So for 12 seconds, you're going to have 30 to 40% damage. That means that you can reasonably delay cooldowns for about the same amount of time, right? A, a napkin math would suggest that you can save cooldowns for roughly 30% to then line them up into that window, which is just yeah. crazy. That means, I mean, you're more than likely going to get um, like an ICD on this. So... On pull, you're probably always going to have it within the first sort of 20 seconds of the pull. That means you're waiting for that proc to happen to then press your cooldowns and potions, for example, right? So it's going to add complexity in the game for sure. The only one, I don't know if you know this, but the only one that doesn't have any RNG in it, i.e. it's not a proc, is the monk ability. And it's when you use your celestials. Did you, did you pick up on that? No. So for everyone else, it's when your summons attacks, you have a chance to gain 6k primary stat but because you're not always playing with summons as a monk you basically get that stat stick when you press your celestial so it's when you use tiger for example as windwalker and i think that's going to increase the stocks is in how good windwalker is like significantly right if you just get that huge damage amp when you press cooldowns and you have control over it i think that's so much better than the other trinkets like a lot better, right? Yeah, it is massively so, and it's better for quality of life. But like you said, it's just better for tuning and damage as well. Like mm -hmm. that's just that's just <laughs> I don't I don't understand how these trinkets are budgeted so high. But it's better than any on-use trinket that we have in the game at the moment. And it might even be like fifty percent better. I would have said, right? Yeah. If you think about how much damage you get from, say, uh, the puzzle box from Algathar, like, realistically speaking, that's probably, what, like a 20% damage jump if you really like mastery inside your cooldowns? Something yeah, like that, this maybe. Is, this yeah. is going to be twice that. Like, this is going to be 30 40%. So it's going to be huge. Um, yeah. 
And, and having said that, I don't even know if it's that good. Like Unholy DK, for example, loves Puzzle, puzzle Box, I'm pretty sure, right? Um, but I don't know how much damage that actually equates to. But anyway, those numbers don't trust them, but just understand that these trinkets are significantly better than what we currently have access to. And having that damage amp window on demand, especially in raiding, like if you get a 12 second huge damage amp window as Windwalker Monk, that is going to be incredibly, incredibly useful. So I would expect Windwalkers to do better. Same in Mythic Plus, to be fair. I mean, there's some damage windows where you just need damage, right? So I'm thinking like first boss in uh, Ruby Life Pools. Usually you can get through the shield, but you could just have a Windwalker like carry one of those shields, right? And then no one else has to save cooldowns for it. So it's, it still impacts Mythic Plus in my mind. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Other ones then, there's a few other trinkets in here. I don't know if you had a chance to look at these. Um... This is a rare one, the Seething Black Dragon Scale. So they've announced it. It's basically a, a stat stick, right? So it's a agility, and then you get a chance um, to 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 get critical strike, um, and then you do like a jump forwards and do damage to everything in the area when you use it. To me, this seems like again a pretty good Mythic Plus trinket. Like the fact you can get on demand AOE damage is going to be very useful, right? Um, I don't know if I like the implementation though. You have to be at least fifteen yards away to uh, to get the damage, so it's going to feel awkward. You're going to have to like run out in Mythic Plus to then jump back in to use this. Yeah, but still could be a good Mythic Plus trinket. And then there was another one. Uh, I can't remember which it is though. Where whenever you use an ability, so it's this one here. I don't know if you've seen it. Elementium Pocket Anvil. Sharpen your weapon giving your main damage dealer, so for example, they use here Sinister Strike, so if you're a rogue player, Sinister Strike, right? Uh, a chance to deal extra damage on hit. And then the on use is use your weapon against the anvil to strengthen it further, dealing X amount of damage to nearby enemies, increasing on hit damage by 20% until shortly after leaving combat. To me, that stacks up to five times as well. To me, that could be really, really good if you can maintain stacks and you like chain pull in Mythic Plus, because if you're constantly in combat, then you're going to stick at five stacks all the time. So that's another one to potentially watch out for. I don't know if you if you've got any thoughts on that that trinket. I don't know if you've seen it yet. Uh, I had, but didn't really understand how it works. That'll that'll also be really really strong in raid, right? It looks yeah. like it's single target oriented and just Long. being off the entire time in raid will be big. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's... Because you, you have that gonna you could have that in a ten minute encounter, right? And it's just permanently gonna make your damage your normal filler spells is what I would have called them, do more damage yeah. is really, really strong. Yeah, for sure. Um it's gonna it'll be quite a hard one to balance though, because all mm. of the specs use the filler spell a different amount, right? So I think yeah. it'll be a lot better for some than it will for others. Yeah. For example, Outlaw Rogue isn't gonna like this because you actually don't use Sinister Strike very often. You basically use uh, Ambush and uh, Pistol Shot at the moment, so it's not yeah. going to be particularly good. I'm trying to think if there's any melee that really use their filler spells a lot. I can't really uh, imagine what it's going to rock off for most specs that I play. Like, yeah. like Soap Rogue's going to get more value out of it than Outlaw is the best example I can think of. But even then... You change your filler, right? Like most of the time you want damage inside of your Shadow Dance window and that's when you're going to be using something like uh, Shadow Strike rather than Gloom Blade. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure basically. But it could yeah. be good. There could be some specs that are going to really like that. All right, next up then we've got some general news. So balancing. So we have here some class tuning. I don't know whether you've seen these, but um, Holy Priest is getting a buff to Holy Fire damage in uh, AOE. We're getting some healing changes to elemental and enhancement, so they're going to be they're going to feel significantly tankier in like sustained uh, damage scenarios. I'm thinking like Eye of the Star, Eye, Eye of the Storm from Hersia, for example. Right, that's where often you might have to like spam heal yourself or elemental boss and not good. You get significantly more healing now. From uh, Swilling Currents, so that's uh, pretty interesting. And then Warlock are seeing some minor changes, so like Destruction's getting a three percent damage increase. Um, Affliction seeing some minor nerfs, and Demonology's getting some buffs again. 
I don't think it's going to be, there's not going to be any major changes here. I think enhancement is going to get better because it's getting tankier. Destruction's already okay. It's like B tier. It might sneak its way up into like A tier with the buff. Probably not. It's not a huge buff, but it's still, it's still not an, a, a bad spot at the minute, destruction. So that's a decent change for them. Anything, uh, anything you want to add? Nope. No, no. Not, no, nothing. No major changes to meta or anything like that, right? It's all going to stay pretty similar. Next up, we've got some final PTR changes. So this was balancing. Ret has been hit pretty hard here. So Ret's seen a bunch of balancing where they've seen quite a few nerfs. Now, I don't know whether this is just a panic at the end to, to change it, but I mean, there's some increases, but like Chesticles Vengeance doesn't really do anything. Final Verdict, they're getting more damage into the spenders now rather than their builders. There was another one down here. Templar Strikes, right? So you're getting some damage reductions there. Wake of Ashes, there's been some uh, damage reductions for. So there's a series of nerfs to Ret, And then the other big one is some nerfs to Prop Paladin. However, the reason why these nerfs are coming through when they've only put it in at the last second is because there's a lot of tankiness getting put into the baseline Paladin tree. So these are going to be net neutral for Prop Paladin. So don't worry if you're a Prop Paladin player. Honestly, you're going to be just as tanky as before. You might even be better than before because of the, the way that the baseline tree works. But Rhett has seen some massive changes. Um, I think they're probably erring on the side of caution with Rhett. Um, I don't know. I think it would be weird to have a new S tier spec right at the end of a tier, right? I think that would mess around with Mythic Plus a bit too much. I don't know whether you've like got any thoughts on it. Yeah, yeah, I think that makes sense. I think it's better for them to be slightly weaker than they want, and then they can just slap an aura buff or come with some other buffs rather than doing yeah. it the other way around. But for sure. uh, as long as they keep on top of it, once they have a lot of rets on live, playing the game, gathering data, and they just they make changes fast before next year, I think either way it's okay. Yeah, I would say this, though, is prepping for potentially an S-tier push for ret next time. So... If you might not know this, so um, not you specifically, I just mean viewers. Ion has mentioned before that he wants a carousel of uh, of specs that do well. They don't want a staple S tier spec permanently in any form of endgame content, and they don't want a staple F tier in any game of uh, in any form of endgame content. Right? They want a carousel and people to be moving around. This to me just screams that they're teeing you up for an S tier placement in the next. Uh, a major patch, so 10.1, I would have assumed. So they're toning you back a little bit now in terms of rep players, but then I would imagine you're getting teed up for a big push in the in the next tier. I, I'd imagine you're going to be at least A tier, if not S tier, in the, in the next patch, basically. So when he said that, did he mean on a peer, ba peer patch basis, or did he mean throughout a single patch? No... On not, uh, yeah, no, not changes within a patch. So that's within between patch. okay. patches, basically. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, or, sure. or maybe even longer. It might have been like, I think he might have said like expansion wide. It might be okay for a spec to be really good for an expansion, but they don't want like long, long, long periods where just a spec is the best in the game and a spec is the worst in the game, for example. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say more importantly, I think the. I think that they should constantly be trying to iterate on the bottom specs yep. uh, and trying to bring them up while having some that outperform slightly is okay. I think when you have specs that are left in the dirt for even a patch, it just feels really bad. I don't see why they couldn't get small buffs uh, at some point. Yeah, completely agree with that. I think they should do more with the bottom end. I mean, they have been, to be fair, this has probably been the most balanced both Mythic Plus and raiding uh, patch that we've had. I don't, I don't know if... You have the same feelings, but to me, I think there's probably 60-70% of the specs that you can play at a, a very high level, you know, A plus sort of specs. I mean, we're seeing some of the world first keys getting timed with like wind walkers and uh destruction warlocks in there, right? So there's some insanely good specs out there that aren't actually meta, if that makes sense. They're just like A, maybe even B specs, but they're still playable yeah. at a very high level. So I think they've done an incredible job personally. Yep, yeah, no, for sure. Completely agree. I think that this season, or, well, yeah, this season, this expansion has been really, really good. 
yeah, for sure. By far the best in my mind yet. And I'm excited for what's to come because I think they're gonna get, only going to get better. Um, they're clearly putting more effort into balancing those weird specs, as we just said. Yeah. Um, next big thing then, so today for NA players or tomorrow for EU players, we have the 10.7 patch releasing or 10.0.7 patch releasing. And the big news for that is that the scare revolts uh being released have you if you had a chance to play this on the ptr or not have you had a look at anything do you know what's releasing no i've I've checked out the wow head post but that's it i haven't actually been on ptr and played it myself yeah okay so i mean there's a few changes for instance demon hunter the extended eye beam blind fury is getting changed i assume you know about this there's this doesn't change damage but it means you're not going to be rooted for as long there's some like minor changes but the biggest changes are to paladins and then after that, I would have said shamans are getting quite a big rework and then probably druids. But in terms of yeah. the content that's releasing, there's a new zone called the Forbidden Reach, right? And then it's the Scare Vaults. And the big news in the Scare Vaults is that it's grindable power. So there's a there's finally a grindable um, power gain for those casual players. And I don't know if you knew this, but you can send keys from alts to your main. So week one, you can probably max out the ring. So there's the, the Onyx Annulet, which is a ring, for those of you who don't know. Again, you can max that out by sending keys over. So this is a big tip for those of you that are going to try and jump in and get a big ring pretty quick. If you just do the starting quest, I think you get five keys, and those keys are bind on account. So you can send those keys to your main and just immediately get a high... Um, item level ring from that so yeah I'm very excited about it I'm going to be trying to grind out a, a high item level ring pretty fast I'm certainly going to spend some time over the weekend making sure that I get as much um, as much time in the Scare of Vaults as possible I think it's rares do you know I'm pretty sure it's rares that drop the, the keys the most um, I don't know if you've got any plans for the, the patch release what you're going to do no absolutely nothing i'm just gonna go in there blind and have some fun with it i do i am looking forward to it though i haven't done any research on the vault system i hope it's not like visions or whatever i really enjoyed them but i don't know if it's going to be timed and i don't know if you can mess them up and like nope. lose a key no you can lose keys but that's in the sense that if you open a door Sometimes you need to go and complete a puzzle in another room to then get the <clears throat> get the chest in that room, for example. So that just means you need to go out and farm another key. The doors, I think, reset each week, I'm pretty sure. So if you have a door that you've opened and you've not been able to complete the sort of the the mirrored puzzle in another room, then you might just burn a key for that week. But it doesn't really matter. Um yeah. basically you want to open as many doors as possible and then complete as many of the, the puzzles and get as many chests open. And yeah, you should be able to do that each week. I think you could spend like four or five days farming keys. But I think you can get a pretty high level ring relatively fast from what I understand. So yeah, it's cool. I think it's also going to add, I don't know if you've looked at it, but you can get some like tanky components to the ring. So you can chop and change. So if you need to be a tank in a certain affix or for a certain boss or a certain um, Mythic Plus dungeon, you could swap in some tanky components. So again, I really like that. You can sort of change your loadout and how you're playing the game on a on a key by key basis, which is going to be really interesting. Yeah, definitely. That's way better than it just being set in stone or you needed charges or something like that to be able to replace it. Like yeah, uh, yeah it's just like in Shadowlands. Yeah, exactly. There's no there's no real downside from what I understand for removing them and putting them back in, which is great. Cool. All right. Next up, then we'll go on to Mythic Plus for this week. So we've got affixes first. Um, this week is going to be a, where does it go next? Spiteful, grievous, fortified week, which is a pretty good week again. I don't know. Do, do you, have you got anything that you want to say about it? I personally think fortified grievous is all right. And spiteful is a decent affix to, to play as well. Um, I think it's okay. It's, it's really, it's one of these ones that's much better in, uh, organized groups than it is pugs like yeah. spitefuls just cannot be dealt with for some reason in pugs the mm -hmm. tank runs one direction the group runs in another nobody cc's mobs die at different rates and uh yeah yeah it can go really wrong right yeah for sure i think it'll be fine for pushing but to me on paper this looks like a bad week like i'm not going to want to play my alts as much because just spiteful and grievous are both 
like yep. on the harder sides of affixes. It's not as if it's a hard and free or double free this week. Yeah, for sure. Like you mentioned, for pugs, it's going to feel way worse. You'll have massive amounts of downtime, downtime on packs. If a spiteful spawns halfway through a pack and it's on you, you just have to like kite it, and it feels awful. Um, obviously, it's significantly easier if you can deal with the spitefuls in an organized group, like you've just said. Like I'll be dropping kidneys on the ones that spawn early if needed, for example. Right? Um, there is. I mean, this is a big bonus. I'll uh, if I just swap over to in game, you can get a an enchant on your belt if you're engineering from BFA, right? To knock back the spitefuls. That's super useful to have. It's a 10 minute cooldown, but I would highly advise trying to uh, to get that if you can, if you're an engineer. Um, the other thing to mention, I think for spiteful is that it keeps you in combat. So there's a few dungeons where staying in combat can be annoying. The biggest one to be is probably knockered where you want to be flying around a lot and using your dragon riding mount to like close distance. You yep. want to make sure you're killing Spitefuls in that dungeon to uh, to get on your dragon as fast as possible. Um, I can't really think of any. There's nothing like Mists that came to mind. I don't know if you've got anything, any dungeons that you think Spitefuls going to be annoying for because of the combat mechanic. Um, court would be the next one for me, like yeah. the second area, because you want to be mounting up and you want to be avoiding patrols and stuff. So being like ushered into a specific corner might not be good, but... You're right, not good. It's definitely the worst. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Grievous then. So Grievous Fortified is okay. Grievous Tyrannical, I think, is worse, right? I think you would agree with that as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but there's a few instances in my mind where it makes it the dungeon significantly harder. So the biggest one for me is Shadow Moon. It's the two Void Spawns before you get to Last Boss. That is going to be pretty awful. You definitely want to lust those two mobs. Um, I can't really think of any other like really bad like Ruby Life Pool's pretty bad again. Um, the destroyers do a lot of damage, right? Especially at high keys, and then you have the storm channelers, the tempest channelers with their lightning storm ability, right? That could be really bad. So you need to be make sure that you're using CDs into those, and you're going to get topped off. Um, I also have Court of Stars written down, so the first mini boss in court. Is, uh, is really frustrating. So the Scream of Pain, right, does a lot of damage. You need to make sure you're topped between the Screams of Pain, so use defensives into that. And then also, to be fair, the last uh, the last add, the, the Vampire, with the Shadow Boat Volley, does a lot of damage. You need to make sure that you're topped between Shadow Boat Volleys. Is there anything else? Any yeah. other big mobs that you can think of that you'd want to... Uh, Want to avoid or potentially play differently, like use defensives into that you maybe don't normally have to. Um, you can't do much about it, and you normally use defensives. But first area of knockered with war spears and shooty boys, that's not particularly mm -hmm. scary for the entire group, but for the range that haven't a bait, they'll be hurting. Um, yeah. So this is the war spears, right? Yeah. Any but no, nothing. Yeah, anything that you can do to remove bleeds, it's going to be very, very useful. So make sure you're getting use of your like your dwarf and racials, for example, right? In uh, in there as a range player. Summary though, it's an okay week for pushing because, like we said, there's not that many time sinks, right? It's not again one of these ones like volcanic or bolstering. Although you you do play it similar to bolstering in a in a organized group, right? You try and get all the adds to die at say at the similar time. It's not quite as punishing, I would have said, but. Um, it's an okay week, not the best. Yeah. Um, in terms of meta then, so if we have a look at sub-creation for last week, so this is the tyrannical raging storming week, there's a few things that sort of moved around, which, uh, which I think is interesting. I mean, Court of Stars, first and foremost, is definitely now the best tyrannical key, um, solidified its place as the the s tier dungeon shadow moon's not which is i don't know i mean we had an awful shadow moon run yesterday in the 25 that we yeah. probably would have timed like could have even two chested it i would have said if we played it perfectly and then to think that court of stars is even better than that is kind of crazy right yeah for sure i think i would have said for us we've had more success in shadow moon but yeah. I guess across the player base they find costs Qu easier. Quarter stars easier, yeah, which is interesting, right? Vault has jumped up massively. It's now a B tier key, which was obviously going to happen because it's uh, it's had the 
Timer nerfs, which were massive when we talked about the 5% roughly timer increases, actually a lot. It's very, very significant. And then there was the change to Azure Blade, which was big. So that dungeon is now pretty good for Tyrannical Weeks, actually very good for Tyrannical Weeks. Other changes, there's a massive change in terms of healer representation. Like we're seeing more and more Holy Paladins, Disc Priests and Resto Shamans playing now. I don't know if you've noticed it, but whenever we pugged healers, we get quite a few Resto Shamans playing, which I uh, I find interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like it as well. I think that this should definitely be the case. I don't think too much has changed, though, has it? They've done some light tuning, but... Yeah, it's been slow and steady, but eventually they've got into a position where most healers are actually all right now. Um, yeah. And then the final big change, which again is super interesting, is Fire Mage has jumped up into S tier. I don't know whether you've seen this in... Uh, any other keys, but there's there's quite a bit of representation now from Fire Mage at the top end, which is uh, cool. It's always been good, but I did not expect it to to reach S tier. I just thought it was going to be Boomkin and Shadow Priest for the entire tier. Um, but we now have three three range specs available. Yeah, which is cool. I think that Fire is really really strong. I think that they might be the strongest. Uh, I think if you pair them with a Shadow Priest, that they probably do the most damage out of every spec in the game. Yep. It's just they just require more coordination than other other specs. So again, if you if you pug in like whenever I'm pugging on my mage, I just play frost. Fire is just a completely different spec when yeah. you're in a pug and you're not being pulled around and yeah, combat times are different and all these things. Yeah, yeah. In an organized group, like you said, maybe you're getting PIs, pulls are getting done around the fire mage. It makes a huge difference, right? Pug in, frost is the way to go. There's loads yeah. of really good melee specs as well, but the kings, so subtlety, demon hunters, and uh, enhancement shamans are staying exactly the same. So, no major changes there. In terms of world firsts, we had two new world firsts uh, this week. So we had a world first twenty-seven tyrannical walls of valor. So this is the first week that it's happened. So. Um, 27 Tyrannical Hov. I, I think if you had pinned me down, I wouldn't have said that that was possible at the start of the season because it was just, it's such a hard dungeon on Tyrannical, but it's crazy that Tyrannical's actually matching Fortified at the minute in terms of the keys that are getting done. Um, I don't know how, I don't know, do you, I don't actually know how we would survive Odin on a 27. Like, I just feel like that would be f ridiculous to uh, to be able to do that. Um, yeah, I don't think I would as a demon hunter. They played mm -hmm. Shadow Priest, Druid, Rogue, right? Is that correct? Yeah, and well, and um, um, Andy Brew's team has done it as well, Thanos Group, so the method, the method, all oh, right. But again, um, actually, Shaman can't get that many externals, yeah. Shaman's probably just a TD target on that fight. Zeth yeah, it's is true. really, really good as well, right? But... Yeah. I mean, you could slide in as the TD target, though, but you ha you need externals, basically. Because yeah. it's it, it, the, the, due to the, the timings, one minutes don't quite cover you. You need something like bear form, etc., to be able to drop into. Uh -huh. But yeah, crazy that that was being done. And then the other one, this is going to be obvious, we've had a 27 uh, tyrannical Azure Vault completed, and there's been a lot of them. So the front page is now just tyrannical keys, pretty much. And there were loads of keys done. Um, like we said here, look, this is uh, an instance where we're seeing new healer representation, right? A 27 tyrannical vault has been healed by a disc priest, which is nuts. So seeing, yeah. some, uh, seeing some new healer representation is cool. All right, then around it up, we've got some, I guess, again, not drama, but like funny posts. So there's a... A post on the, on the forums at the minute that says, do away with key depletion for not timing. I'm wondering why getting one less piece of loot and simply not upgrading to the next key level if not timed isn't enough. Why do we have to go back to the content levels that we've already timed? This is obnoxious because sometimes you simply run into a string of bad luck, people do seeing someone leaving for no good reason, etc. I think keys should not go down a level for timing them. I just don't think that would work. I don't know about you. If, if you... Say if if we just got to continually run a 25 uh, key that we wanted to do, like a temple, right, which we haven't been able to do, and we just tried to consistently improve on it, I think we would just spend hours in there as like practice and we would just like, if anything goes wrong, you just restart and you go back to the beginning again. Yeah. 
I think it'd be awful. Like I, I would actually hate it at the high end having that. Like, yeah, I, I just it would be it would turn it into like raiding where if something goes wrong, you just wipe, right? Like someone dies early and you don't want to waste the combat res, you just wipe, right? Yeah, uh, it's it's the great style push, um, thing where you don't lose your key after a deplete. You can just go again, but they only have to play for eighteen hours every like six months, so it's not. Yeah. It's not exactly the same thing. I actually don't know if I would mind it. I kind of like the idea because it would mean that every team in the world could push to their limits. So we would see we would see higher keys done. Um, it also it would also mean that we might be able to might be able to go do like a twenty seven or something like that, right? If we just decided to play one dungeon for. Yeah. Like yeah. a week or two, but I still don't think that it would be very fun. I don't think it would be healthy and make sense for the game. Yeah. So my big concern with it is, like you just said, it would take you like two weeks to do your, your peak dungeon. Now, in raiding, it's okay because a wipe means usually a boss is, what, five or six minutes long. The end boss is a longer sort of 10 minutes. But you wipe two minutes into that, it's fine. But say you get like... 38 minutes of the way through oh no because the halls of valor is a 38 minute time so you get 36 minutes through in a hov and then you wipe to odin and you're like oh but next time we could do it we've got to change this one little thing i just hate it i think it would be yeah. awful like getting that far into a dungeon to then fail at the final hurdle and then having to restart i think that would grind me down so i'm happy with the current system i don't think this really needs changing though um and anything else that you want to say no, no, I think that was that was correct. You had the nail on the head. Happy, yeah, okay. And then final thing, this is a funny clip from uh, from Twitch. Did you get to see this? No, I haven't. It's basically a demon hunter who used Vengeful Tree outside of the Shadow Moon uh, first boss because they play it next to the door. It's so funny. Literally, as the door's coming up, so you pull Blood Fury over to the door in some instances to get the first set of like daggers outside of the arena. Yeah, and eventually retreats outside of the door and just bricks his twenty-four. It's hilarious. That's, yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, you can't even get a combat res or anything like that. You're just done for, right? Yeah. Anyway, right, that's it. Bit longer, I think, than uh, I anticipated. This one, how long have we gone for? Fifty minutes, still under an hour, but. Been through all of the major news, some massive changes this week. Biggest thing to me is that Mythic Plus in 10.1 is going to get much better as a single piece of endgame content. You're not going to have to Mythic Raid almost at all. Getting those higher item level trinkets and uh, tier set earlier on is, is massive for me. I'm, uh, I'm super excited for that. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, stopping by. I appreciate you doing this with me again. It's... Uh, Always great to talk about World of Warcraft for like an hour with you. Um, so yeah, I appreciate you, uh, appreciate you helping me out. Yeah, well, good. Again, my pleasure to be here. It's always fun. Perfect. All right. Well, we'll catch you guys next time. If you've enjoyed it, drop us a uh, thumbs up and a subscribe. And we will see you in the next one. Peace. Peace.